What is going on everybody? Welcome to the first video of my Nutrition 101 recipe series. And today we're going to be making baked California chicken. So California chicken's delicious. It's almost like a caprese chicken if you think of it like that. Um, this is one of my favorite recipes. It's very easy to make and very foolproof. So the first thing you wanna do is marinate your chicken. I start with, um, I'm also prepping in bulk. So I'm making about three pounds of chicken thighs. You can use any cut of chicken that you would like. Um, I like thighs the best personally because they've got good protein, good fats um, in it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're gonna make the marinade. So we're gonna use one cup of balsamic vinegar. So remember, this is more than one serving that we're making. So we're gonna go ahead and fill this up to one cup. And now throw that in there. Got a cup of balsamic vinegar, put that away. Next thing, we're gonna add a little bit of olive oil. We're gonna add a quarter cup of olive oil. Now remember, this is for at least a few meals. I'm not sure how many exactly this is gonna last me. Um, at the end, I will portion out a serving for you guys. So we're gonna do a quarter cup of olive oil right there. Throw that in there as well. Now, what we're gonna do is we're going to add in a little bit of honey. So honey is kind of a secret ingredient in this recipe. Um, I find it adds a little bit of flavor. So we're gonna add in a tablespoon of honey. Now, pro tip, just use the spoon you're gonna mix with because a standard kitchen spoon is actually gonna be about a tablespoon. Now when tracking your nutrition, if that's something you want to get into, I suggest um, measuring things because that's the way to be the most accurate no matter what your goals are. So we're gonna fill up this tablespoon of honey. Beautiful. And we're just gonna plop it right in there because we're gonna end up mixing with the spoon. It's a little hard to mix the honey off the spoon, but you know, life's hard. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get some seasonings. I like to use pepper, salt, um, garlic powder, onion powder, and Italian seasoning for this. For this recipe, I highly recommend marinating this for anywhere from 30 minutes to a few hours. Um, tonight, since I'm a little short on time, I'm not gonna be doing that, but I did go ahead and preheat the oven. I'm baking these in the oven. You can also grill these and these will be fantastic. And um, you can grill them, you can bake them, really any way of cooking chicken you would like. So I did go ahead and preheat the oven to 400 degrees for these chicken thighs. All right, so we put in Italian seasoning. We're going to put in some pepper and some salt now. Now, when it comes to seasoning, um, if you care about fitness, please, for the love of God, season your food. There is no reason to be eating bland chicken and rice. Technically, I'm making chicken and rice tonight, but this is delicious chicken and rice. This is in my uh, Chad chicken and rice recipe series um, because this is just so delicious. So I added some pepper. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit of salt. You can freehand it or measure it if you're trying to keep a little lower sodium. Just add a sprinkle of salt in there. Now I'm going to add onion powder and garlic powder. I like a lot of seasoning. Um, I love spice. I think it enhances every dish. It's very hard to go overboard on spice, especially if you cook in an oven or a crock pot. So yeah, this is what the bowl is going to look like once it is all measured and spiced out. Now we're just gonna mix a solid consistency and then we're going to actually add the chicken straight to it. So I like to use a bowl to mix it all up to make sure that the chicken gets coated, especially if you're new to making this recipe. Um, but if you're a little more experienced, then something you can do is you can um, just go ahead and make it all in the pan that you're going to use in the oven. I'm actually going to toss a little garlic in here. Um, now, another little life hack. If you don't want to dirty another spoon, I'm just going to use the back end of this one. So, garland, garlic. So this is great because you don't actually have to cut up this garlic. Just lob it in there. Now 
we're gonna mix it up again because I almost forgot it for the first time. God forbid, can't forget our garlic. And mix it up again. Now we're gonna start throwing the chicken breasts, chi sorry, chicken thighs in here. This is also great with chicken breasts. I've had it that way before. Can't really go wrong with this marinade. I do suggest it on a poultry though, or maybe a fish. I don't know how this would be with beef. Although I guess maybe that means it's time to try it. Yeah, go ahead and paper towel my hand off. Open this up. just gonna put the chicken thighs into the mixture and make sure they all get nice and coated so one at a time swirl it around drop it in there coat next one in coating both sides Another safety thing. So chicken has to cook to at least an internal temperature of 165 degrees. So if you don't have a meat thermometer, I suggest either investing in one or getting really good at figuring out when that is. Um, that's gonna be anywhere from like, I think 25 to 35 minutes, maybe even 45 tonight in the uh, oven. You can air fry these as well. This is delicious air fried, but with the size of the batch, that I'm using. This is not something that will really fit in the air fryer. So we're just going to go ahead and put all of these chicken thighs in the mixture. So we've got about three pounds of chicken thighs. This is the amount of seasoning that I use for three pounds and for balsamic vinegar and things like that. So if you wanted one pound, just divide everything by three and whatnot. Additionally, chicken thighs are a lot cheaper than chicken breasts, so if you're on a budget, this can be a fantastic option. And if you're um, health conscious or trying to keep a little bit lower fat, then go ahead and opt for the boneless, skinless version like I have here. Throw the rest of these in. And then another important thing, wash your hands before you start cooking. If you're new to the kitchen, you may not know that. Um, if you're experienced, I hope you know that. Um, and then especially after handling raw meat, make sure and wash your hands afterward. So as soon as I'm done with this step, I'm gonna go to the sink and wash my hands. Meanwhile, the oven is preheating. As a side dish for this, I'm gonna just make some white rice. I'm gonna make a cup of white rice dry and ration that out into my meal prep. We are continuing to just throw the chicken thighs in here. Part of the reason that I decided to make this video series is because I think it's really hard in today's day and age to be a healthy person without knowing how to cook. I think that, you know, as companies move more toward ultra processed food and fast food is on the rise, it's very easy for big corporations to take shortcuts, use lower quality ingredients, and skimp on important macronutrients such as protein. So. In the interest of that, I think it's important to learn how to cook real food at home that is also delicious and doesn't make you feel like you're suffering or struggling. So that is a lot of the purpose of why I am hoping to make these videos. Now we've got our chicken mixed up. This is what the bowl should look like. These are beautiful. These are beautifully coated. And the next step would be to marinate these. Once you have marinated your chicken thighs, go ahead and lay them out on the baking sheet. 
this might be a little tight because this is a little bit smaller of a sheet. We'll angle you guys. So we're gonna lay these out. Ideally, they're not really touching each other, but if they are, it's not really a big deal. We're gonna lay them out and arrange them right on this sheet. Again, I have no culinary or cooking background, so I think these recipes are pretty easy to follow and don't really require lots of skill or effort, um, which is exactly how I like to handle my cooking as a busy college student who runs a business and plays a sport. So anything that is really just low attention level is great. That's why I love my crock pot so much. This is not a crock pot recipe though. This is a um, oven recipe. I mean, I guess it could be a crock pot recipe. You could definitely cook this in the crock pot as if that is your preferred method. We might be running out of space here. We will see. I'm gonna have to do a little feng shui here with the thighs. Okay, we got a whole other row. It's all right, we don't need to panic yet. up here in this corner so we're gonna move some things around a little bit this is definitely a very crowded baking sheet if this is your first time making this recipe I do not suggest that your baking sheet looks like this um, but this is how the cards fell today so that is a-okay this is what we've got this is what it's gonna look like I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys real quick so this is what we got and these guys are going to go in the oven. I like to set an initial timer of around 30 minutes and then check them there. So we're going to go ahead and throw these in the oven right now. Kitchen's a little bit mess and we're actively working on cleaning. And I'm going to go ahead and set my cell phone timer for 30 minutes. While the chicken thighs are in the oven, we're gonna go ahead and get the rice started. I like white rice a lot better. There's a lot of debate between white rice and brown rice. And honestly, as long as you're not diabetic or unless there's certain dietary goals that you need, I suggest eating whichever one you like better. Um, for me personally, if I am eating brown rice, I'd rather not eat it. It tastes like hard for me. So I go with white rice most of the time. So we're gonna go ahead and measure out a cup of white rice and a cup and a half of water. Now ideally, you measure your rice with a measuring cup and your water with a liquid measuring cup, but it won't really matter if you do the water with just one of these guys. It will work just as effectively. So, grab a cup here. do a cup and a half of water. Cup of rice, cup and a half of water. I'm gonna turn that on a burner on high until it boils up. And we're gonna go ahead and cover that as well. This lid right here, it's not the right one. It looks like we're going to make this one do right now. As long as it's covered, it doesn't really matter the exact semantics. Wait, maybe this is it. Nope. So, cover that until it boils up. And now, what we're going to do for the rest of the time is we're going to make the topping for the California chicken. So typically this is topped with a avocado, um, tomato, and seasoned topping. I like this a lot. Uh, adding those fruits in there is going to give you extra nutrients, extra nutrition. 
and also just tastes really good. So we're going to get our avocados and our tomatoes. And we're going to go ahead and get a cutting board and a bowl as well for these to go into. We get cutting board over here. Now, what I do suggest doing is making the topping in smaller batches because it won't keep for as many days as the cooked chicken. The cooked chicken, if you're meal prepping, can cook can be kept safely for three to four days. Whereas the topping, it's going to start to turn color due to the avocado after a day or two. So I do suggest making the top the topping in smaller batches. I will spell out the macronutrients at the end of this video. If for anybody who is curious and the serving size, I will also spell that out. When you're picking avocados, you want them to be slightly soft. These would be great if I had an extra day or two on these, but you know, we make do with what we have. I'm gonna go ahead and pick these two because they are the softest. And then we're gonna cut these guys. So when cutting avocados, what I like to do is I like to kind of go around the outside and split them in half. So just like this right here, make a little mark. You move it around the outside while keeping your ha other hand fairly out of the way and using it maybe for a little stability. You just come around, make a full circle, and you can twist it off just like that. And then what I like to do for just making it easier to cut is score it. So we're gonna go like this, make some lines this way. We're gonna make some lines the other way. This way we don't have to do as much cutting when we have made our topping. We go ahead and do that for the other one. As for the pit, just give it a nice little decisive chop with your other hand far, far out of the way and you can just roll it off your knife like that. No need for avocado pits to go flying across the living room, or sorry, the kitchen. Oh, I'm starting to hear the rice, so this might mean that the rice is starting to boil over a little bit. It looks like it's starting to get some bubbles, but it is not quite boiled over. I will show you guys what that looks like when it is boiled over. Now we're just going to scoop out the avocado into the bowl, just like this. Accidentally got a little skin in there. And remember, I'm not a trained chef. I'm not perfect. I'm going to make mistakes. I'm going to slip off, up, but so is life. So that's one avocado. Now let's take a look over at our rice. So our rice appears to be boiling over a little bit. So at this point, yes it is. So we're gonna remove the lid and we are going to turn the heat from high to low. And at this point, we set a timer for 20 minutes and we are going to simmer it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then we're gonna put the lid back on. If it starts to boil over again, just remove it for a quick second and set it back on. Very simple, very easy. Okay, so the next thing we're going to add to the topping are some tomatoes. I'm gonna add a couple of these and save a couple for the next time that I make the topping. Um, just gonna give these a quick rinse and dry them off. So, so far I've used two of these medium-sized avocados and two of these Roma tomatoes. I like Roma because I find that they're the easiest to cut because you don't have to work around the core. You can just kind of cut them this way. Now as it gets close to your fingers, just flip it around. 
Now I just quarter these. Some of the bigger ones, I might third them and cut them in half again. And they're about ready to go into our mixing bowl. There's one tomato cut. I'm gonna go ahead and get through the other one. Going through this a little quickly because I'm excited to eat. Now the chicken is still baking in the oven. The 30 minute timer is about to be up. So we will go ahead and temp check the chicken at that point. I accidentally dropped the tomato, so I'm discard it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do it again. So we've got all of our tomatoes cut up. Now for this meal, um, I think this is a great balanced meal because we've got all of our food groups. We've got some uh, rice, carbohydrates, we've got some fruit, and we've got some protein, which is all really important, as well as some healthy fats. Now, if I could change one thing, I would add some vegetables, but honestly, it's kind of late at night and I just had rugby practice and my Walmart bill was a little higher than expected because I had to refill things that, um, like some household items. So... Next time, if I did it, I'd add a vegetable in or just a simple salad, but for tonight, it's gonna be all right. If you're in college or you're somebody who's really busy, something I suggest is just kind of have, thinking of your nutrition as daily rather than every meal. Rather than for trying to, you know, fit a square peg into a round hole, instead take a daily approach. We're gonna season this with a little bit of salt, pepper, and Italian seasoning. Again, feel free to measure this out to about a teaspoon. I just kind of free ball it. We have some salt, some pepper, and some Italian. So we're gonna be pretty generous with the Italian. Another thing, if you have it, um, basil goes well with this topping as well. So that's a great addition anytime you're making this. So it's pretty heavily seasoned as you can tell. So I'm just gonna grab a new spoon and mix this up. And this goes on top of the avocado chicken. this with just a touch of lemon or lime juice. Um, fresh is ideal, but this is also great. I'm just gonna add a little bit of lemon juice and mix it up again. And we've got ourselves a topping. Also gonna chunk some of these avocados up a little bit more. And now we've got a beautiful topping. The initial timer for both the chicken and the rice has went off, so we're going to go ahead and uncover the rice and set this out of the way. We're gonna fluff it in a couple of minutes once we have temp checked the chicken. So in order to do a temperature check, 
we're gonna use a meat thermometer. This guy, you just stick it into the biggest piece of chicken. And if that one's cooked, it's safe to assume that the smaller ones are cooked as well. Wear your pot holders for this. It's a very hot oven, and we don't want any risk of messing up. Uh -huh. There we go. Now we're going to go ahead and temperature check and probe our chicken. It says it is just over 100 and 65 so i am just gonna leave that for a couple of minutes just to for i guess insurance i do prefer the initial reading to be a little bit higher than what it is um so i will leave this for a couple minutes i prefer chicken thighs to be 170 180 rather than quite that low we are going to go ahead and temperature check our rice again so got our meat thermometer here I'm going to check a different one this time, just to make sure that I'm covering all my bases. So this one's pretty big. I'll check it. It's 170. I think this one we're also going to check in here. 175. So it looks like we are good to go and all is well with the chicken. So we're gonna carefully pull it out. There's a bit of moisture here, so actually what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna sop it up with a paper towel first. So we're gonna grab some paper towels. If this happens to you, never fear. Just kinda of stick a paper towel in here and it will do the work and absorb all that extra juice so you don't spill all over your kitchen. Go ahead and dispose of these. I do suggest a higher rimmed um, pan in this case. This will just help you make sure you don't spill. And we're gonna go ahead and pull this out and plate it. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and plate this. For me, I've got 150 grams of white rice, nine ounces of chicken breast, and we're gonna go ahead and top this off. Um, I'm just weighing stuff for the purpose of sort of figuring out the calories because I know that's why you're all really here is wondering how many calories this delicious food has. So now we're going to go ahead and put this into grams. So remember there's two avocados and two tomatoes in here. So if I use like a third of it, I would just log a third of two avocados. Pro tip. Um, or I could log it the hard way. And given that there's about an equal ratio volume wise of avocado to tomato, log it as whatever grams this is divided by two. macros aren't in the description. This is the final product. This is absolutely delicious meal. Keeps me full, gives me lots of energy, and produces great gains in the gym. So give this a try.